Hi everyone, my name is Miller and welcome back to another season video. Today I will give you an overview of what can be expected this season and talk about some of the news that has been going around in the community in the past couple of weeks, including the story about Turtle Snail, the crew that finished in 30th place with 17 people without even running a single online race over 15 days. So sit tight, take some popcorn and let's go. To start off the claiming of the car for season 96, the BMW i8 Liberty Walk. One of the best looking tier 4 cars out there and finally another Liberty Walk milestone. Normally I'm not the biggest fan of the i8 series, but this one is a different story. It's a case where a Liberty Walk kit can just completely change your perspective on the car, because instead of looking like a super expensive hybrid, it looks more like a super expensive supercar. It makes it look meaner and sportier in some way and I think seeing this at any car show, it will definitely turn some heads. But that is most likely also the only thing this will do in game, more or less being a show car and that is due to its performance. In game right now it runs around the mid 11 seconds, which is not too bad for a tier 4 car, but more or less average. But it's the fact that for any Tempest 3 challenge, this car is not usable due to the set difficulty level. I can't really meet the speed trap challenge and combined with its mid tier time, for me this will be a collected piece. For newer players however, this could be a great starter car as BMW fusion parts are not that hard to get. And it's a car you can create a bond with. But for me it's going to be a great addition to my i8 collection. I wonder though if in the future when it becomes a prestige car, it might have any other color available which might be quite interesting. The season prize milestone car for season 97 then is coming from a new manufacturer, the Infinity Project Black S and this car gives me the same vibes as the Juke R2.0, a blacked out more powerful version of which only one exists and both tied to Nissan, I wonder if there's a link between them. But Infinity is not just by Nissan, it also has a French flavour introduced to it by Renault, not just Renault but Renault Sport Formula 1 team. This car is supposed to be a test bed to introduce new ideas and technologies that could be used in real life applications coming from the pinnacle of technological motorsports. Fun fact about me, roughly two years ago I actually applied to take part in the Infinity Graduate program where ideas like this were thrown around, like how can F1 tech impact real life cars but how can real life cars impact Formula 1. This car has all around small bits referring to the prestigious Formula 1 team and I will go more in depth on those in my Season Max video, because it is quite an interesting car overall and I'm honestly fascinated about it. This sedan style sports car is not really the area I'm attracted to, but this one just has that special touch I can't miss. With only one color being available in real life due to it being a concept car, they probably had a rough discussion with Natural Motion to make a season price car and they chose to go with this red livery, which I think was a great choice, and also a nice collector piece in case you have the blue joke R2.0. For the milestone spec then, we will get the authentic real Project Black S, and performance wise, it can be seen as a higher tier 4 car. Not the best out there, but a competitive one, which I think is rather fair, but more on that of course in the Season Max video. The yellow accents on the black just make it so good looking. The prestige car, the Varys Honda Civic Type R, which surprised me at first as being a tier 3 car because it just looks like the tier 2 version with an aero upgrade, which isn't that drastical. But what's under the hood has also gotten an upgrade to justify its jump in performance. If we compare the two we can see a slightly changed engine bay, which has an added blow off valve and a plate in the front showing HKS, a company known for supplying performance enhancing parts, indicating the engine could have gotten a complete revamp. We also see larger brake discs, a new exhaust and there is probably a lot more we can't really see with the naked eye. But the most noticeable is without a doubt the body kit all around by Veris, a reputable Japanese manufacturer known for its fully functional racetrack inspired aero parts. And with the Civic Type R FK8 it is no different, as these parts don't only reduce weight, they also increase the downforce. But is it again worthy to justify the jump to tier 3? Well it does have a performance increase and a weight reduction, so I would say why not? Performance wise in game it is now the fastest non-legend tier 3 car running a low 7.7, .7, so it might even have 7.6 potential. Tomorrow starts the 10x drop rate, so good luck to everyone. Now what will happen this season in terms of events and to start off the Shelby Super Snake Showdown, a type of event we can expect to happen more and more often in the future 
as it seems to be a way for us to collect elite parts to customize our cars and I'm all for that but I think I will sit this one out mostly due to the lack of Shelby fusion parts and to cash resources. But I think I would like to have a small discussion about is the option to buy stage 6 parts with cash and epic fusion parts in the bundle which sounds nice right? But we are talking about 39 euros which might even bring a duplicate stage 6 part. We are talking about almost double the price of a car just for a stage 6 part, some cash and fusion parts. Compare this to opening 7 crates, it is cheaper though if you were to buy the bronze key separately because you also get some cash and 10 epic fusion parts. But I find 39 quite excessive. And of course as we are talking about crates, they have added a new cascade system it seems like with crates rewarding specific loyalties. The rare crates which require you to open 5 normal ones to unlock it do give rare fusion parts. We can also give epics, uncommon or stage 6 parts. Same goes for the epic crates. It does indeed give you 1 or 2 epics, but alongside that it can give uncommon or rare fusion parts. And to unlock this one, you will have to buy 5 rare crates, each costing 800 bronze keys. If you then want to unlock the stage 6 crate, which rewards you only one item at a time and can only be bought 4 times, you will need to buy 5 epic crates on top of that, costing 1000 each. And if you came this far, you will be as shocked as me to find out that these stage 6 crates cost 9 euros each. What is that? I mean it's an interesting idea, but I don't think it will attract much if you look towards collecting stage 6 parts. Because by the time you have unlocked the paid crate, you will have put down 12,500 bronze keys. While at the same time I tried to get all stage 6 parts using only the first crate and through loyalty etc only took me 3 loyalties costing me a total of 14,700. So in terms of getting stage 6 parts, it's not really interesting. But if you're on the hunt for epic fusion parts to max out the car, then it might be slightly interesting to unlock the epic fusion parts crate. But in the meantime, you have to keep in mind, they cost 1000 each and 4000 plus to even unlock them, which is quite costly. I've read people online saying it's a cash grab etc. It might be with the stage 6 crate, but what is good is that it's an additional option and not a replacement. So if you play the old way, you don't lose anything and it's not fast upon you to actually go that way, which I do appreciate. As for other events, nothing is yet confirmed. We might already have the best of British finale next week, as I saw this picture rise up along the way. I remember when I mentioned in the update video about the special British Classics Cup. I think it will be a prologue-like event for the finale allowing us to get extra parts for these 3 British Legends cars. But the files don't really give any conclusion if it will actually happen this season or the next one. The other option then is an EVO slash Duality Cup style event for the Copo Camaro and the Cobra Jet to win the 50th anniversary Copo Camaro. But then again we might see something completely different out of the blue, an EVO Cup slash Showdown slash Flash event for the Veneno Roadster perhaps. The kind of hidden card that no one knows what is expected of. I haven't seen its performance maxed out yet, but if it is identical to the regular Veneno, I think it might become a showdown flash event where you can either use the regular Veneno or buy this roadster and also run with it, which would kind of make it fair. But that is a long shot and I could be completely wrong. For this season it is really unclear what we can expect, so hopefully in the next two days things might clear up a bit. The final thing I want to talk about is something completely unrelated but a short story of how 25 legit current or former top 10 runners went bonkers and modded 30 accounts with a purpose to prove the game is broken to a point they could perhaps reach top 10 without doing a single online race. The story of Turtle Snail. So we have been seeing how lately a vast amount of crews in the top 10 have been kind of ruining the game by blatantly modding their way through everything. In a way to prove natural motion this can be done undetected, Turtle Snail decided to make 30 duplicate low level accounts all with certain cars maxed out including a purple star juke r2.0 for showdown which they did not win the previous season so they got it not legally basically. And then with a goal to see if they would be detected at all in the end of the season. But the best of all these guys did not even do a single online race to get their RP. Nowadays there are ways where top 10 players sometimes don't even race at all to get their RP. So instead of racing and swapping or taking wins all the time to get to 300,000 cap, they basically get it gifted. Somehow. So that is what they did for all 30 players at Turtle Snail. And by the end of the season they lost 2 guys due to account synchronization issues 
and ended up still rocking in 18th place without having done a single race with more than 150 million RP, which is crazy if you think about it. During calculation they lost another 11 guys due to bans, which honestly is fair, but another 17 were able to keep their RP, keep their account and get the rewards for 30th place. Now I'm talking here about a bunch of 25 legitimate players trying out some loopholes as amateurs and they have proven that more than 50% was able to take advantage. So imagine how some of the top 10 are doing this consecutively for many seasons, not on an amateur level. And that is the playing field legit crews have to go up against every single season. And there is a lot more to the story. If you want a full read about it, I will suggest that you to go to the CSR Tips and Tune Facebook page, link down below. It's really interesting. But in the end, they have proven that the filtration system for mods has some holes which need fixing if you want to go back to a clean top 10 fight, not ruined by people running auto touch, modded cars and automatically added RP. We saw top 10 just before calculations of 159 million RP per crew or 100,000 plus per person extra on top of the cap all coming from Showdown, with plenty of them using a modded maxed out Purple Star Juke R2.0, which in many cases they could not have won the previous season. Like I've already said multiple times before, I'd rather have RP completely removed from Showdowns and see a 20 way tie first place, compared to this where adding stuff and modding gains you places and playing legitimate basically screws you. Capping can be done by anyone, modded or not, but requiring a purple star maxed out of the previous season to secure top 10, to me is unfair and unbalanced. And with that message, I want to close off today's season video. The season seems a bit blurry ahead, but we still have to wait and see what will actually happen. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, I want to thank you for watching all the way through. My name is Miller, see you around, and keep racing.